come when I talk about mock meat? I always catch a handful of people in every crowd, and we got a big crowd today, so I stopped counting at about eight or nine. How come there's always a handful of people that wrinkle up their noses, make big wide eyes, and start glancing at the people next to them across the aisle like, soy chicken, is this guy crazy? Soy bacon, he must be out of his mind. How come this stuff that is made of soy, wheat, vegetables, grains, and spices, no chemicals, Contrary to the lies being spread about these products by the meat and dairy industries, how come this stuff is considered gross to most people, but meat? Meat's got five components. Let me break it down for you. Blood, flesh, veins, muscles, and tendons. The cut-up corpse of a dismembered body. How does meat not qualify as gross and disgusting to everybody? How in the world is a beverage? A liquid that oozes out of the udders of cows, a secretion that drips from the mammary glands of another being that's loaded with pus, by the way. Oh yeah, let me tell you about the pus in your cow milk. It'd be my pleasure when you hook machines up to the udders of cows three times a day to suck them dry. Those machines cause massive amounts of infections on the inside and outside of the udder. Now let's add all the bovine growth hormone they put in cows to make sure they produce huge quantities of milk, which always leads to another infection. The machine doesn't know what not to suck out. Pus, mucus, and infections right in with your milk, and yeah, milk is pasteurized. But when did pasteurization become a removal process? It's a sanitation process. You're only sanitizing pus. And if you want to look this up online, well, you don't think the dairy industry would ever use the word pus when they write about this problem in their own trade journals. Yeah, they're going to deceive you again with this. Look up the scientific term for pus, somatic cell count. And by the way, our government, the USDA, they allow the dairy industry to have a maximum amount of one eyedropper full of pus in every glass of milk. Drink up. Oh, and by the way, while you're looking up that lie from the dairy industry and all the other ones, you might want to look up casomorphins. I got it up on both sides of the board. Remember that part in the speech earlier when I talked about people being hooked on cheese like it was laced with weed, crack, and morphine? Mother cows before birth produce a substance in their milk to make sure that the calf stays close. Actually, human women do this too. It's not morphine. But in cows, it is a version of morphine, casomorphins. That's why people are so hooked on cheese, got to have their daily fix of morphine. Does anybody know what an egg actually is from a hen? And don't say embryo or aborted fetus, not even close. It's unfertilized, so it can't be either. Hen is a female, though. Unfertilized egg through a female system. It's part of her menstruation cycle. It's a hen's period. People scramble up hen periods in the morning, and all of a sudden, I'm weird because I don't make omelets anymore. And what about vomit? Oh, we're going to take those blinders off today. Come on, you guys love vomit. You adore it all over your food. Better give this one a pretty name, though. No one's going to buy and eat vomit. Unless we call it honey instead. Honey comes directly from a bee's stomach. It is regurgitated right through a bee's mouth. Look it up with any wildlife biologist. But nobody wants to eat bee vomit nut Cheerios. We want honey nut Cheerios. So we hire ourselves to play euphemism games. The standard diet of a meat eater is blood. Flesh, veins, muscles, tendons, cow secretions, hen periods, and bee vomit? Now we're not done yet. I am not going to let you off that easy while I got you here today. You know, we top this all off, in my opinion, because every November, during that certain holiday people love so much, people take a dead turkey, open up the dead turkey's ass, or carve out a really big hole in their ass, take some stuffing and shove it inside their dead empty ass, and use their little dead ass as an oven to bake some bread. Somebody else's dead, empty, bacteria-laden ass to make bread? Ass bread? <laughs> and people think vegans are weird? And mother cows make milk for one reason anyways. During Q&A we're about to have, you can ask me whatever you want. I'm no politician. Bring up anything. If you went online before I got here, saw my radical essays, that got me kicked out of countries, bring them up. There is one question. I will not entertain them. 
You cannot ask me why cows make milk. Thus, if it's good for us, shouldn't we be feeding it to our kids, Gary? Shouldn't we be having it? Nature took care of this one at the beginning of time. Cows make milk for their babies and for their babies alone. Case is closed forever, permanently. No debate, no discussion. They don't make milk for baby elephants, baby orangutans, baby hedgehogs, baby rabbits, baby rats, baby humans, adolescent humans, or adult humans. This body of ours has absolutely no need for cow milk, like it has absolutely no need for giraffe milk. And zebra milk, and rhinoceros milk, hippopotamus milk, camel milk, deer milk, antelope milk, horse milk, pig milk, dog milk, or cat milk. The only milk that we ever need is our own mother's breast milk when we're born. That's it. And when we're done weaning, we never need one drop of milk ever again. No species on this planet needs milk after they're done weaning. But if you want to include some kind of milk in your diet like I do, let me reiterate the good news. Soy milk, rice milk, almond milk, hemp milk, coconut milk, oat milk, hazelnut milk. I promise you will like one of those seven vegan milks. Remember, when you go veg, you don't give up anything. You got the vegan version of stuff, or eat things that are truly natural, like fruits and vegetables, beans and lentils and seeds. I want to thank everybody for listening with an open mind. I do appreciate that.